Okay, everyone. Well, good evening. Um, there's a few people or more people who are still going to come in, but I'll let them join and we'll get started. Um, I'm Debbie Schwartz. For um, I think a lot of you know me. I started Road to College and Paying for College 101 uh, Facebook group, and I'm here tonight with Brad Schiller, who's the CEO of Prompt. And um, <laughs> Uh, I kind of joked with Brad just two minutes ago before we started how many of these presentations he has done um, because he's been, he started probably back in like April, right? Or even March. Or, yeah, like February, <laughs> March. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, there's, if you've never been to one of the presentations, you will learn a ton about college essays, how colleges kind of view the essays, how you can help your student. If your student is here, they will learn a lot about the best type of topics to be writing about and how to go about it. And then even tonight, um, we had we asked people to um, uh, if they wanted to, to submit their uh, essay, and it's all anonymous. Uh, and so Brad has three essays that he's going to critique, which I think will give people a good, um, you know, uh, insight into, you know, uh, what the interaction might be if uh, you work with one of their coaches and just kind of the, the types of things you should be looking for if you're helping um, your student. Um, and uh, and I, I, did, I did a meeting the other night and I kind of felt like, I'm, you know, I'm a parent. Luckily this year I'm done. I'm not going through this process, but I went through it three times and like went through it last year. But I know the feeling come October and I feel like we should all take, you know, like a deep breath <laughs> because there's a lot of anxiety um, getting pent up as uh, everybody's trying to finish up essays and financial aid forms just started and uh, and, you know, early admission um, um, deadlines are coming up. So before before we actually fully get started, I always love to see if any people just kind of tell us where they're from. I'm assuming everybody here tonight is has a student with a senior. You know, you might have a, a student with a younger student uh, just to and you're here just to see what's going on. But um, tell us um, where you're from. And also, uh, if your student is working on any early admission um, deadlines. Uh, so, which are coming up, we're probably November 1st, November 15th. Uh, it's just good to know. Let's see. Yep. Nebraska, Fairfax. Yep. November 1st and November 15th. Yep. They're coming up. How many more weekends are left? Really? Like mm -hmm. two, two full weekends, right? Maybe or three, three full weekends uh, before that November 1st deadline. Yep. Early action. Yeah, oh, three on November 1st. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's definitely an early crowd, early admission crowd. <laughs> but, uh, well, but, that's, that's not surprising. <laughs> right, uh, right. Why else would you be here tonight? <laughs> uh, we're getting close to deadlines here. Come on. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Okay. So take it over, Brad. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I was just messaging a couple of people who have sent their essays in because wondering if they, uh, so if I, uh, if you've done that and I direct message you, please respond to me, which would be super fun. Um, it's because I have a question for you. Um, and then, uh, so we're going to cover a little bit of content this evening, uh, be a lot of fun, uh, but we're going to start with um, just kind of covering some of the basics, um, you know, some of the stuff, if you've come to one of our sessions before, uh, will be similar to what we've covered, just like on the importance of essays, what colleges are looking for in essays, etc. This is really important as we like head into uh, specifically uh, discussing essays. Um, and so, what I mean by that is uh, we're going to learn, OK, here's what colleges are looking for. So when we actually read the essays and evaluate the essays, we can kind of evaluate them against what colleges are actually looking for in essays. All right. So um, we are going to go ahead, get kicked off. I'm sharing my screen, um, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, my company is called Prompt. Uh, we support more students on more college admissions essays than any other company in the world by about 10 times as many. Uh, we are working with thousands and thousands of students right now. Uh, currently, our essay coaches are reviewing about 500 essays a day as we're headed into the early action, early decision deadlines. Um, and uh, we have a lot of really good success with students. So three and four students that we work with get into one or more of their reach colleges, not target colleges, I mean like reach colleges where their academic profiles um, are uh, uh, 
kind of around or below the average uh, admitted student at those institutions. Okay, um, that, that's how we define it. So I'm going to go ahead and a couple things I'm going to cover. One is what is the purpose of the application? Okay, this is really, really important. The entire purpose of your application is really about potential. Okay, it's to assess your student's potential to be successful in college and after they graduate. All right. And the way that you assess potential, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit, is through the students' experiences that they've had to date, okay, and the traits that they've showed through those experiences. It's kind of like a job interview, right? So if you go into a job interview, you're going to get asked, like, some questions about, like, tell me about a time when you, like, had leadership, or tell me about a time where you've shown drive, or, like, those types of things. And that's the same kind of rationale here, right, where you want to be describing experiences and outcomes that you've had and actions that you've taken that prove that you're going to be successful. Because if you've been successful in the past, that is pretty indicative of being successful in the future, all right? So that's really important. And there's two components to success. There's academics and there's non-academics, all right? Um, today, we're gonna to be focused on the non-academic side, which is primarily related to essays. Uh, this also has to do with like your extracurricular activities, activities list. Uh, potentially within your recommendations, that sort of thing. That's, uh, you know, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, but there's also the academic side and component of this uh, as well, which we're not going to focus on today. We focused on a little bit in the past. But the key point that I want you to understand here is, is that having a strong non-academic profile, so in other words, strong essays, uh, can 10 extra chances of admission uh, into many schools. And we're going to talk more about that as we go. But there's a really big myth, and we're going to see this as we actually read some of the example essays that come in, is that essays are about storytelling. They are not, or rather, this is an incomplete message, okay? So we just learned that the entire purpose of the application is to prove success in college and beyond. Yet, almost everybody says that, you know, counselors, uh, admissions officers actually say this, um, students say this. Uh, parents say this, like everybody says like, oh, you need to tell your story in your essay. Just tell your story. That is incomplete information, right? You need to tell your story that proves you're going to be successful in college and beyond, okay? And so what ends up happening is, is that so many admissions officers say, hey, we just want to get to know you. Please tell your story in your essays. And then when you actually read, like, how do they evaluate applicants? It's about this. It's about potential. It's about success, etc. So what ends up happening is that students tell their story or they tell a story that they think is interesting about them, but it actually doesn't prove their success at all. All right. And so that's what we're going to focus on tonight is how do you actually go about doing that? Uh, and, and what we're going to cover tonight and when we see these essays live and how we review them uh, and how we talk about them will help you help your student as they're working on their essays. But it hopefully will also give you a picture of like, what do we do as like essay coaches with students? Okay. Um, so what does this mean, right? So if you come to anything before, you'll know that we cover the five traits that colleges look for in applicants. I'm going to kind of briefly cover these right now because we are going to identify these actually in the essays that we're going to read, okay? Because these are the five things that are really tied to future success for students. So the first one is drive. So these are students that um, overcome challenges, right? So they're in difficult situations uh, and they push themselves to succeed. And not only are they kind of like just sitting by, oh yeah, there's this difficult situation, it's gonna pass. No, they're taking specific actions to make getting through that scenario or that thing uh, better, okay? So these are like really driven students. This could be academic related. This could be related to certain activities that they're in. This could be related to like their personal life or peer groups or community, right? It can be associated with so many different things, but colleges love driven students because any time that that student comes across a challenge in college or in life, they're probably going to persevere, they're going to get through it, and they're going to come out a better person as a result of it, and they're going to take actions to improve their situation. This is really important. It's probably the number one most important trait is drive. Uh, many colleges also call this grit, right? It's the same type of thing, all right? The second is intellectual curiosity. So these are students that love learning just for the fun of it in their free time to gain a deeper understanding of certain subjects or topics in which they're interested in. Uh, these are like the self-learners of the world. Uh, and guess what? Tons of students 
really are interested in things, right? They're, they, they have like hobbies, they have different like topics they're interested in, et cetera. And that can make for extremely compelling content in their essays. And yet a lot of students completely just don't even write about it, okay? Uh, but that really matters because when they go to college, the college wants to know that, oh, the student's gonna be really into learning about like the topics in which they're interested in. Uh, and that also proves success. The third is initiative. So these are students that are really entrepreneurial. They're not willing to accept the status quo whatever organization or whatever group of people they're involved with, they're identifying ways to make things better. And not only are they identifying it, they are acting on it. Okay, so they are, they're the ones that make stuff better. The fourth is contribution. So these are students that no matter what group, community, uh, activity they're a part of, their peer groups, um, that group of people is better as a result of their being there. And that's really, really important. Because colleges love people that contribute to the school's community. They absolutely love that. And the reason why they love that is because, well, guess what? Uh, that is the connective tissue across the entire campus. So colleges know that a huge part of their value is the network of people that you meet at that college, right? Um, and they're sometimes your lifelong friends, right? They, you do all sorts of different things with them. Uh, they are potentially like good for professional life, all that sort of stuff. And so they want these like super contributors, you know, as part of their school's community. So you want to touch on that. And then the fourth or the fifth one is diversity of experiences. So colleges don't, you know, as much as like, you know, as joke is like, as much as it seems like UPenn or Princeton only wants like finance majors going there or people that are going to Wall Street, that's not really what they all want, Right. Uh, what they want is they want people that are going to go do a bunch of different things in the world. Um, and so they have different interests, people that have different like life experiences and ways of thinking about the world that they can kind of meet with other people that have other viewpoints on the world and kind of then kind of change their views or like figure out what they want to do in life, all that sort of things, uh, adding unique perspectives to the student body. And so diversity of experiences really matters a lot too. Uh, and so an example I always really like to use is from all this Harvard, thousands of pages of Harvard admissions data that I've gone through. And one of the things that really jumped out at me is Harvard always says, you know, and a lot of admissions departments will say this, they're like, oh, we don't really care. It doesn't really matter what you're, what you're planning to do in life or your career ambitions. Like that doesn't affect like your admissions chances. That's false, completely false information, right? Uh, because let's say you're applying to Harvard, and I'm only using them as an example because they literally have the data out there. Um, if you're applying in medicine, your admit rate, uh, and this was back in 2019, was 4%. And if you're applying to be a teacher, your admit rate was 11%, okay? Literally like a 3X improvement uh, in admissions chances. Uh, and I'm not saying like apply to be a teacher if you don't want to be a teacher. Don't do that, right? But just be aware that they're trying to build these like well-rounded classes of people with different interests, okay? That's really, really, really important, all right? Uh, and so when we're looking through these essays, what we're going to do is we are, as we're reading, we're gonna think about what did I learn about the candidate? What traits do they have? Do those traits actually tie to these five traits that colleges are looking for in applicants? And those are the things that we're really gonna wanna hone in on and improve. All right, so oh, Brad, there's this question about um, does your essay have to show all five of these? Like, you know, how do you um, show that yeah. so your you great show, application, yeah. applicant, yeah. even though, you know, you're not going to have all five of these? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, broadly speaking, you want to focus on your two or three strengths. Some students like will have bits and pieces of all five, but you really want your one or two, maybe three, like really strengths coming out in, let's say, your common app essay. In other essays, you're probably going to want to reinforce those strengths. So you might have like, oh, let's here's some examples of me being really driven in my Common App essay. And then in the supplement essay that you're writing uh, for a certain school, you're like, oh, let me let me touch on like this other area of my life that I'm really driven. And then the the, the admissions officers notice patterns. They're like, oh, well, Debbie is just really driven, right? Oh, that's awesome. Like we want this like super driven student. Um, and so like they, they kind of latch on to these different things. So well-rounded, yeah, that's nice. But what they really want is like people that have like very strong strengths in certain ones of these areas, okay? Uh, and so really strong applicants, they might touch on like two of these in big ways across their application and other ones might have all five, right? Across all of their application. But rarely does an essay like show like all five of these as being like extreme strengths, 
Okay, so like focus on your, your one or two or three. All right, um, before we get to the example reviews uh, and, and doing the reviews, a couple of one thing I wanted to highlight is like if I was to just distill down like when do essays matter, when do essays not matter? Okay, essays matter for highly selective colleges. So these are like 15% or below admit rates, typically speaking. Okay, uh, and the reason why that matters is that those colleges get a lot of students that meet their academic bar okay so they get far more applicants that are academically qualified than they can admit okay so for example at harvard roughly 80 percent of all applicants at harvard uh, are above their academic bar meaning that they believe harvard believes they will be academic are capable of being academically successful at harvard okay uh and harvard accepts 2,000 students a year you know 80 percent of now the 60,000 applicants they got last year, right, is, uh, you know, nearly 50,000 students, right, are academically qualified, and they're taking 2,000, right, so essays really matter, because that's a differentiating factor. Uh, essays also matter at selective colleges, so 15 to 50 percent admit rates, where you have sufficient academics, but your academics are not, like, strong as compared to other applicants. Now, that's really hard to know, I'm going to be honest, like, it's hard to know like that, but, like, a good rule of thumb is, if you're looking and you're like, hey, I've taken really strong curriculum uh, and maybe your standardized test scores are in the top quartile of admitted students, like that means that you're probably like fairly strong academically and your essays may matter a bit less, okay? Uh, it could also matter at large colleges where you're applying to highly desirable programs like computer science or maybe applying out of state at certain institutions. For example, Carnegie Mellon's computer science department, really hard to get into, all right, um, because Lots of really great students want to go there. They have a limited number of slots in the computer science department, and so therefore they have lower admit rates. Okay, that could also be like computer science at the University of Washington is another example here. Uh, and so you really have to consider that as well. Like, what are the really popular programs? And a lot of schools won't publish this data on admit rates per program, or even SAT scores per program, or like uh, you know, GPAs per program, or those types of stats. But that's really valuable, useful information. Uh, just try to Google it, be like, hey, what's the admit rate for Carnegie Mellon Computer Science? And maybe you will have some information that shows up somewhere that can be useful. Uh, essays matter less for selective colleges where your academics are strong compared to other applicants, okay? So if you're applying to Georgia Tech, for example, and you have really strong academics, guess what? Uh, as long as you're not saying that you're a horrible person in your essay, you're probably gonna be fine, all right? Uh, and they're also matter less for large colleges where you might be applying in state or to less competitive programs at those colleges. Okay. Um, once again, if you have really strong academics compared to other students, they're probably just going to like, they'll be like, Hey, probably going to accept you. Right. Uh, and, and so, uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't put the effort in on your essays. Like you definitely should, but I just want to be clear on like, where do essays matter and where, you know, do they matter potentially less? All right. Um, and so I'm going to cover one thing before we get into the details here, but just like uh, in terms of working with us and our essay coaches, um, uh, you can go to prompt.com slash road to college. Uh, I think we now work with hundreds of, of uh, road to college families. It's, yeah. it's a good number now. I think it's like, like 300. Yeah. yeah, it's probably close to 300. Yeah. So um, highly recommend doing this. Uh, people have had a great experience. We're actually the highest rated uh college admissions uh, essay coaching company uh, in the world. You can look on Trustpilot if you don't believe us. Uh, we're like 4.8 out of five stars. Like nobody's close to that. Um, and, um, you know, just a couple of things I'm going to highlight. One is this week through Sunday. Um, so Sunday is the end of the week in this case. Uh, you get $100 off our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, you should definitely take advantage of that because, we're running out of slots even. We're so busy this year. Uh, we're, I know we're going to cut off on sales for that on October 15th, but we may have to do it earlier. So if you're interested in our one-on-one -on -one coaching, please like go ahead and, and sign on now. The other thing that's really cool, this is new, uh, and my team and Debbie were talking about this, and Debbie loved the idea, mm -hmm. So, uh, which is called an essay tune-up, where you do actually, like a, instead of us just reviewing your essay and providing feedback, you actually submit your essay and do a coaching call with one of our um, essay coaches. And what we do is that enables us to not just look at your essay, but do kind of what we're doing tonight, which is also kind of diving in a little bit into, okay, what is really compelling about you? And maybe are you even writing about the right topics? Okay. 
Uh, just in the past week, I've done, as I've started working with a couple of students, we've basically completely changed their Common App essay drafts because I read the Common App essay draft and I would ask them, okay, what's the single most compelling thing that you've done? And they would answer something that was awesome, right? And I was like, well, that's not in your Common App draft. <laughs> so like, let's, let's fix that, right? Uh, you want to focus on like the absolute most compelling things that show your trait, you know, these five, one or more of these five traits. Uh, and so we, you know, this is why it's really important to speak with somebody that really kind of has a deep understanding of this. So we can identify, okay, are you headed down the right road or not? And if you are great, you can also get individual reviews of your essays, but this is a fantastic starting point. Yeah, we, uh, we thought it was a good, good combination of like, um, you do yeah. get your essay reviewed, but then you get to, you know, talk to somebody for like 50 minutes. So it's a good combination of, um, you know, having somebody review it in advance and then you get there and you can talk it through because sometimes you just need to talk through what's going on or come up yeah. with a better idea. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, when you sign up, by the way, if you sign up for the essay tune up, uh, you will then get a, a message probably sometime tomorrow about like scheduling the specific time uh, for your essay tune up. And we have a good amount of availability in the coming days and next week uh, for those. Uh, so you definitely want to take advantage of that. Please don't be the person that comes to me the Monday before uh, November 1st deadline. Uh, that's our single busiest day of the year. Um, just we will probably do 800 to 1000 essays that day alone. Uh, will come in to us and uh and so like do yourself a favor get started now if you haven't started at all like one-on-one -on -one coaching is a great way to start just for your common app essay package 499 dollars uh like literally half or a third of the price of many other places to to be perfectly honest uh and uh even now at this time of year and so i i highly recommend doing this uh if you haven't started because then you can just get it done like take that stress off because this is something that students will procrastinate to the last minute. The data shows that over 90% of students submit their applications within 48 hours of the deadline. Okay, which means that a lot of students are kind of waiting till the last minute, not just to finish the applications, but usually the essay components of those applications. So highly recommend doing that. All right, cool. Uh, we're gonna start looking at some essays. Are we ready? A little, oh, just one question, you know, um, somebody is asking about, uh, about the main essay and supplemental essays and kind of um, whatever your, you know, focus is on the main essays, should you make sure that you have a different focus on the supplemental, like how much do they need to be tied or not tied together, that main essay and the, yeah, and the supplements? Yeah, so the so everything is looked at in totality, right? So when we when we work with students, what we do is we start with what we call an application plan. So basically, like what is all of the content that's your most compelling content that we know has to make it into every single one of your applications? Okay, that's number one. Number two then is is like you don't want to like overlap on content, but what you do want to do is tie your story together across the essays. Okay, um, and so. You know, you may show the same trait on multiple essays, but it's actually showing different experiences that relate to that trait. Okay. Um, you know, if you're super into computers and computer science and you do a lot of coding, guess what? Like, there's probably multiple examples of that, right? You don't have, you can still write about like coding on multiple essays. That's fine. It's just like one of them might be like, hey, I was, you know, making something with some friends or I was, you know, uh, engaging with community online communities, right? Uh, related to this. And then the other one's about like specific things that you've done on your own projects. So like there's ways to do this where it's not like you can keep reinforcing like an interest or a theme, but like it's actually on like slightly different content uh, essentially. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, the key is, is like everything needs to fit together cohesively. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is that they um, have really compelling content that just because a, an application doesn't have enough supplemental essays, they just leave out of the application instead of putting it in their additional information section for that school. Okay, so you can change your additional information section for every school. Okay, and you probably sh like you you should strongly consider doing that uh, just to make sure like your most compelling stuff like fits there. Okay. Yay. All right. Whew. Let's get to uh, to doing this. Let me see if anybody direct messaged me back. Uh, 
as I can't tell, it doesn't look like it. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and read some people's essays out loud, but I'm gonna remove some names. And if you, if it's your essay that I am reading out loud or your kid's essay, and you wanna come up and uh, talk about the essay, uh, we are going to do that, okay? So you can do that if you want um, and we can actually chat about it. But I'm gonna read the essays out loud because yeah, it's fun. Usually I have students do this. I have them read their essays out loud. Um, and, uh, and we have a blast because we have like a bunch of people, uh, you know, kind of watching and listening in and, and typing in the comments and the chat and all that sort of stuff. And so what I want you to do, this is almost going to be like you're back in school. Uh, I want you in the chat, uh, as we are going through this, I want you to write out, uh, number one, uh, what did you learn about the student? And number two, what traits did they show, if any? Uh, and number three, how, you know, is this essay well-structured? And number four is, um, you know, what didn't you learn about the student that you wanted to learn? Okay, that's really important. All right, everybody can see my the essay on my screen. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I'm gonna read this out loud. I have not looked at these essays yet. Uh, I love doing this live, so, so uh, bear with me uh, if I uh, stumble over some, some words here and there. All right, cool. As, this essay. How would you react if a heavy ball traveling at over 100 miles an hour was shot at your body? That's what I do nearly every day of the year. Some people may say I am crazy, but if you ever met another lacrosse goalie, you'd realize this probably will be that, that us lacrosse players are an unusual breed. You see, it's the most mentally challenging position in one of the most physical sports in high school. Growing up, I've always had a keen eye. I can spot something outside my peripheral vision. For instance, I could hear my parents tiptoeing out of my room or catch my brother snatching my piece of the dessert even with my head turned. This sensitivity could be detrimental. For instance, on July 4th, I could not go to the fireworks celebrations because the loud pops hurt my ears. In preschool, I was afraid of my teacher who had a loud booming voice. In second grade, I pleaded with my parents not to make me go to flag football. The thought of others coming close to me with my senses on overdrive petrified me. Fast forward to fifth grade when my lacrosse coach asked for a volunteer to be the goalie. I stepped up to the challenge, lo and behold, I was good at it, really good. Word was getting back to our high school lacrosse coach that a grade school goalie was to keep an eye on. I was on fire. Sadly, during sixth grade football practice, I collided with another player twice my size and experienced my first concussion. To occupy my time, I turned to Boy Scouts and my great love of the outdoors to learn new life skills like camping, tying knots, and all sorts of neat stuff that Boy Scouts teach. By eighth grade, I was recovered and back to my number one love, lacrosse goalie. But another accident sidelined me for the rest of the season. Despite these setbacks, my zeal for playing lacrosse never wavered. I practiced daily. The day before spring lacrosse season opened, I was outside practicing my catching and throwing in the snow. Later that season, I was awarded the Kyle First Head and Soul Award given to the teammate that best represents determination, self-control, and selfless devotion to teammates and outstanding sportsmanship. This award was created in respect of Kyle Kirst, one of the most well-liked and well-respected coaches in the history of New Jersey lacrosse. I am very proud of receiving recognition because it means I exemplify some of the attributes Coach Chris Kirst uh, embodied. While COVID dampened our school lacrosse season, I could still play in our summer club season, which was very valuable to keeping me grounded and focused on COVID. I mean, focused during COVID and well-tuned for the upcoming season. And it paid dividends. On our 2021 lacrosse season, uh, saw my team go undefeated for 18 straight games, ultimately losing to another school in the NJ Tournament of Champions final. Well, what, once a hindrance, I learned to channel my keen sense of awareness into a carefully crafted skill as the team's starting goalie. Those heavy balls traveling at lightning speed had met their match. Okay, so... What I want everybody to do, because uh, I don't see that many chats that have come in, please write about what did we learn uh, about this student, number one. Uh, and number two is, um, you know, what traits did they exemplify, if any, especially related to the five traits that we talked about before. And then three is like, what didn't I learn that I wanted to learn, which is what I always say is kind of the most important uh, question on. 
uh, a lot of times, okay? Uh, and if this is your kid's essay and you want to chat with me, uh, feel free uh, to unmute yourself uh, or I'm going to, to talk about this essay in just a second. Uh, but let's see what comments are coming in in the chat. We have one thing here. It would help to know the prompt. Well, this is probably a common application essay. So actually the admissions readers don't even look at the prompt probably that you have submitted <laughs> this under because mm -hmm. uh, there's literally a common app prompt for everything. They even have one topic of your choice. So we don't actually need to, to know the prompt in this particular situation. So passion and perseverance come up a lot. Grit, drive, determination, resilient. Okay. Resilient, okay. The first one, somebody said, uh, turned a disability into an asset like the disability of the um, like sensitive hearing. Yeah. So I'm gonna say, um, so one thing that's super interesting here uh, is, so a lot of people, and I see students do this all the time, where they kind of are like, oh yeah, this student essay shows drive or these other things. And like, what I'm gonna say right now is, uh, this student may be driven, but this essay does not. It doesn't show, show it, yeah. It just doesn't, okay? And let me tell you why, okay? So I basically, this student could be like a completely natural good goalie. And I don't even know how great of a goalie they are. I, I, you know, maybe their team went 18 and 0, great. Like, was it because of him? I, I, I have no idea, okay? Um, and so it, it, it's clear that, okay, I see like a couple of things that, that jump out at me. Uh, you know, one is I was outside practicing catching in the snow. Okay, great. Like, so you're practicing. But, but like, how did you practice? How do you improve your skills? Like, how have you found yourself getting much better? Has your save percentage gone way up? Like, what is like the actual like hard outcome metrics that are associated that show me that you've actually really improved? Okay, number one. Number two is, this is really interesting. So you got this award, great. Well, determination, self-control, unselfishness to book. Okay, and selfish devotion to teammates, great. Give me some examples. Like, where have you actually like, been devoted to teammates, show me that you actually have contributed to your team in some way, have, have your teammates like also improved their skills. Like I'll give you an example. Like uh, last year I was working with a student who was like, yeah, my basketball team like improved from like three and 20 to like, you know, 18 and 10 the next year. And a lot of it was because I literally created an improvement plan for every single player on my team and held extra practices and like gave them videos on like what to watch and like specific skills to practice. So like literally everybody on the team improved, right? Now that is like, no, that's an extreme example, but like devotion to teammates, yeah, great, right? Here's like example concrete stuff that show like drive or initiative, that sort of thing, okay? Uh, you know, practice can also show like uh, intellectual curiosity, like depending on how you're practicing and like figuring out what skills you're building and, and how you can improve upon that, et cetera. But I'm not getting that in this essay at all. Um, instead, what I have is, uh, you know, I, I jump to, okay, concussion, but I don't really get at, okay, what did they learn from that experience? Uh, you know, have they kind of improved in, in other ways or did that affect them like with schoolwork? And then they have to like change study habits or other things like that. Uh, you know, then, a brief interlude into Boy Scouts, but okay, you learn new skills, but like, once again, like the skills aren't that important. It's like showing me that you actually have experiences that relate to these traits. So at the end of the day, I kind of read this and I'm like, okay, this student may be driven, but I'm not sure. Okay, the student could take some initiative because of some of this or be a contrib big con contributor, but I'm not sure, all right? Uh, and, and so those are the things that like really need to be highlighted here. And, uh, usually when we talk, when I talk with students, you know, this would be an essay or an example of an essay where we'd figure out like, is this even the content that we should be covering in the common application or is there more essay or is there more compelling content to cover? Uh, because on the activities list, if you just list out like that, you are, uh, you know, the goalie and, uh, you know, that you won this award uh, and, you know, your team lost in the, you know, made it to the finals and went 18-0 and you just put that in the description. Like, guess what? That That's pretty much what I learned in most of the essay here. But there, there was actually a question earlier before yeah. you went over the this essay about kind of um, how much 
uh, should you like talk about um, your different activities and achievements that it might be in the activities section versus um, go in, you know, how much should you include yeah. in, in your main yeah. essay so about that, that? Yeah, so the great question. And so I get this a lot. And the answer is, is that, yeah, sometimes your activities list is going to cover some of the same material that might be here. But what this does is it allows you to actually put all of that into context, okay? So if you are, um, you know, a student that I, I was talking to like uh, the other day, like started a business, right? And, and there they made like $100,000. I was like, pretty impressive. Guess what? If you start a business and made $100,000, yeah, you're probably going to put the hundred thousand dollars in your activity list, but that should also make it into your common app essay because like you're reading it within context. Okay. So you're kind of seeing that metric or that result is actually really useful to understanding like the experience. So if you're telling me about the steps that you've taken to grow your business, you're like, okay, like, eh, that's a business. Great. Like lots of people start their own business. And then you say, oh, I made a hundred thousand dollars last year. And then people are like, oh, that's really impressive. So automatically now you're like, oh, the steps that they took aren't just like random steps, but they actually had a result associated with them. Uh, and so, you know, that's why it's like really important to be able to like add the level of detail and storytelling that kind of puts these like more impressive things like into uh, more context, right? And so that that's where... Um, uh, you know, you will see some overlap or a little bits of overlap, but then when people read the activities list, you want like super short, punchy, like, here's what I did, like, here was the results, you know, that, you know, here's why it's really compelling, that sort of thing. Okay. So Brad, over the summer, I did an interview with this woman, um, Becky Sapke. I don't know. She wrote um, a, a book that just came out called, um, uh, oh my gosh, something at the gate. Sorry, I have it back here, but. <laughs> no doubt. Um, but anyhow, she made one comment, which I, which kind of stuck in my head. She was, she was an admissions officer for 15 years at Dartmouth college. And, um, what she said was as an admissions officer, she actually felt that she was in the role of almost like a lawyer, you know, that she was piecing together the evidence that students were giving her to figure out the case. So it just was kind of like an interesting, um, kind of give me an, an image of like, you know, that's what the common app is. You are presenting the evidence of who you are, you know, to, to, for somebody to piece it together. And the easier you make it e piece together, like the easier they'll understand who you are um, as a person yeah. and a student. Yeah, yeah, and that's like, that's exactly why we say, prove you'll be successful in college and beyond. Your experiences are your proof, okay? And how you write about them. Um, and, and so, you know, in this case, like, you know, writing about lacrosse may be the right decision for the student, but it really needs to focus mostly on, uh, I would focus most of this, not on like, okay, I have this like great ability that I've had my whole life. That's, that's not particularly relevant here actually, because guess what being, having great peripheral vision does not signal that you're going to be a great student in college uh, or successful in life. I mean, it's a really nice, I wish I had that skill, but, but uh, you know, that, that, that this is like not necessary, but the student could really focus on their, their, their practice habits, you know, and like their devotion and self as devotion to teammates. And this could end up being a really compelling essay still on this topic. Okay. Um, but a lot of the content is different. All right, cool. So uh, let me just take a quick look at, um, all right, so I'm going to jump to, we're going to do one more essay. I'm going to jump to my third one because I believe the person that submitted the second one is not here, at least according to uh, my thing, but the third person is. So I want to make sure that the value is here. Um, uh, and uh, uh, looks like this might be another sports essay. So apologies if that's the case. Uh, no, maybe robotics. after this, you should talk Ro about just robotics. like, the, yeah. about, oh, we got robotics. About, I just saw yeah. championship. <laughs> oh, no, here we go again. Uh, but a lot, I, I mean, probably like 10, 15 percent of kids are writing about sports, maybe more. So, all right. A championship I could not ignore, an essay I could not postpone, another essay I could not postpone, a calculus assignment I postponed as much as I could, a rugby game I could not miss, and a student government speech I could not back out of. Whew, it's a long sentence. Uh, the week of May 17th, 2021 rounded the corner and I was ready to break. 
Despite the colossal challenge before me, I was going to do it all, and I did, but it wasn't that easy. Robotics is something that I take extreme, extremely seriously because the world championship was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that week. I was putting in eight hours each day before to prepare. My essays would take around 10 hours when writing my best work. Two of them would take 20 hours. Yeah, I don't know what the essay's for. Um, with the, my rugby game around the corner, I needed to keep up my hour and a half practices every day. I had a final calculus project, another 20 hours. My student government running mate wasn't a speechwriter, so that was my job too. I also had my regular schoolwork, don't forget. And when given the option to choose between my best work and anything less, I always choose best work. This meant I couldn't sacrifice time or in, on anything. To say I made it through without hardship or challenge would be a lie. Monday the 17th, I went to my English teacher, Mr. S S Seymour, uh, to ask for an extension. I laid before him all the obligations I had. I have laid out on this essay. The nice bit is the teacher is very understanding and likes me as a student. He said no. My heart beat faster and I replayed the list in my mind. He continued telling me I, how I need to follow through with obligations I make. I heard everything Mr. Seymour said, but was focused more on keeping the forming tears from leaving my eyes. If I couldn't succeed, he would not recommend me for AP English. The stakes were high. I left room, the, only, the clock only had 24 hours and I booked 30. But on this same day, I turned myself around. I went to robotics at 5 p.m. after rugby practice to continue coding my robot. And I dreaded having to, to stop to do my homework. It was that fear of having to perform less than 100%. And I wanted to prove to Mr. Seymour that I could do it all. I stayed up. I stayed until 8 p.m. and packed up some stuff to go home. I wouldn't hide it. I played video games just like every other high school boy in the history of high school boys of the century, of course. I was a gamer, but not this week. My gaming computer didn't turn on once as I shifted every ounce of my focus and power to completing my work. The next days were a grind, wake up, go to school, go to robotics during my free periods, do rugby practice, go back to robotics for three to four, five hours, go home and do work, an essay, calculus, robotics, note, booking, whatever I could at the time. Thursday came and the VEX Robot World Robotics World Championships began remotely from our school's basement. I missed two days of classes that I had to make up at home. Next was a blur of success. I handed in an incredible calculus assignment, delivered two A minus papers to Mr. Seymour, kept up with my homework, started in, in my rugby game and wrote an incredible speech for student government. But above all else, my team of three received the highest award at the VEX World Championships, the Excellence Award. The Excellence Award is for the team that does the best in all aspects of the competition, just as I excelled everywhere that week. Furthermore, this is not a new theme. Every time a new bar is set, I surpass it every time. This whole endeavor was due to the combination of the work put together, of all the work put together. If I had gotten that English extension, I would not be writing this essay. In many ways, I'm happy Mr. Seymour made me do what I did because I think every, exper every experience in our lives shapes who we become. I became someone who knows I can meet challenges, and I do. I set myself higher bars all of the time, waiting for the day I find my limit. That day is yet to come. All right. So uh, if this is your child's essay and you want to chat with me about it, you can uh, <laughs> unmute yourself. But if you don't, that's totally fine, too. Uh, and so in the chat, please go ahead. Uh, what did you learn? And what did we learn about uh, this particular student? Hey, Brad, uh, it's Nicole Piper. I'm happy to chat with you about the essay. Oh, yay! <laughs> Welcome, Nicole. I know. And I've got Alex here with me who wrote it. <laughs> oh, if Alex wants to chat too, we can do that. Cool. All right, so once again, in the chat, please drop in. What did you learn about Alex? Hearing another really good a really we can't good. hear you too well nicole and alex oh sorry is this, is this any better yeah that's yes, way better. much better okay so i was saying it was really interesting hearing someone else read it out loud and i think um you know all of a sudden i think is as you were reading it i was like oh it's starting to sound like a laundry list and um so i think that's a really helpful thing that someone else who is not familiar with the content to read it out loud so you can hear it 
Mm-hmm. It's a great trick for a lot of like any anytime you write stuff to read it out loud. It makes yeah. a big difference. I, I read everything out loud that I write, and I literally yeah. write probably at least ten thousand words uh, a week. So <laughs> just the, <laughs> the context. Um, yeah. So. And I think we had a couple other chats that have come in here long, <laughs> really busy, but it's a bit long and chronological and to be compelling. So let me give a uh, so question for Alex. Uh, what is the single most compelling thing that you have ever done, Alex? Or Nicole, you can answer this too for Alex. Um, this, this is Alex, me. Yeah, you got to um, get a little closer to your mic. That's better. <laughs> Okay, like this? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you say, when you say compelling, I mean, I know it, the word kind of like defines itself, but what do you mean by that? <laughs> so if somebody was to be like, what is, if, if, if well, let's say it's like a peer or a friend, it's like, and you ask them, it's like, what is the most amazing thing that Alex has ever done? Interesting. Okay. Um, it would probably be, like, I definitely, I take a lot of pride in my robotics. I put in a ridiculous amount of time into that, uh, often 30 hours a week on top of all my regular school. Um, and winning the world championships was a big thing for me. So that would be the biggest, the biggest accomplishment, the most uh, time investment I have, like the biggest time investment I have. And one of the big things that my friends think about when they think about me. Yeah, cool. So, Alex, do you feel that comes across in your essay? Uh, sort, sort of. I mean, I meant to, my intention here was to hint at it and explain the actual, um, like the actual specifics of my robotics experience in an additional essay. Um, so what I intended for this specific essay, it's a common app essay. Um, I intended this one to be more about um, just perseverance, really. Got it. So a couple of general things here, right? So the, I think the, so number one is, is like, when you're, when you're thinking about like, I, I always say is like, try to put your most compelling content in the common app essay, because it's your longest essay. Okay, number one. Um, and you can kind of weave in stuff within your story sometimes a bit better than. Uh, now, you can write about robotics actually in multiple essays sometimes. Like one of them could be more about teamwork or like self learning or those types of things. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, something else could be here, right? But so it's like the same kind of like topic of robotics, but it's kind of a different theme of, of the essay. So you, you can do that as well. But many times, like I was just talking to a student the other day and we were actually looking at, hey, that did the same thing you did. And I asked her like, what's your most compelling content? And it was like this other thing that wasn't really like shining through in the Common App essay. And, that, and she said, hey, I'm gonna write that about in these other essays. I'm like, okay, let's take a look at the other essays for all the schools you're applying to. And like, guess what? It was, there wasn't like an obvious place to put that other content in a, an essay that was long enough uh, to do it justice in, in some of the cases. Okay. So something for you to consider is like making sure that there would be a really strong place to put that if you aren't going to focus there here. Um, secondly is the, um, you know, there's a lot of this that I don't really have a great understanding of. So this is really compelling, right? Okay. You won this award. Like, guess what? That's almost at the end of the essay. So now I'm kind of just being like, pretty much the entire thing that I'm reading or the entire time I'm reading this, I am thinking, okay, you have a lot of stuff to do. You're probably going to do it successfully. Otherwise you're not going to have written this, but getting a good grade on like a calculus assignment or doing okay on an essay, um, on some essays, eh, you know, that's, that's not a, you know, I also didn't have a great understanding of like how much work you had to do for robotics or like 
uh, kind of your role within the robotics team that actually led to the really good outcomes. So when I read that, like, okay, yeah, you did a great job. And it's like, well, what was your specific role associated with this? So basically I learned, hey, you had to do a lot of work in a short period of time. That That's actually like kind of a good essay topic in some ways, because it shows like a lot of drive. So I'm not saying that, but what would make this way better is like, if you were like, hey, I have all this stuff to do. And the thing I care the most about this robotics world championship is this weekend and like our robots just not freaking done at all right <laughs> like, you know, it's like so you have this problem where you're like there's this massive problem with our robot i also have all these other things that need to be accomplished and i like have to figure this out like i have to solve the problem and schedule my time and get all of these different pieces done while also making sure like the code for our robot works right and maybe like your teammates also have to step up or like you know, there's different ways that you can kind of make this this work, but like, what is like the big problem that needed to be solved other than just not having enough time? Because you also don't want your reading reader thinking like, oh, was your essay like assigned multiple weeks ago and now you're coming to the teacher? Um, you know, are you procrastinating? Should you have been doing some of this stuff earlier? Like just something to kind of like consider like, what is the mindset or like, what are the ways that somebody could actually read this? Um, this like, government running mate like the speech writer thing too so you wrote a speech like that's super interesting but all i do is learn like from what you tell me that it was a great speech but i don't actually have like what was the outcome of that speech right did that speech actually get you the you know the the job right in, in student government for example right so these are the types of things that like as i'm reading this you know okay you wrote an incredible speech like Okay, great. Right. That maybe you did that in 10 minutes. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, but Brett, do you think there's yeah. too much here? That it should be like uh, now? Yeah, it's like the, I think the big, so the big pieces of this, like in terms of like, where am I going to like just cut a bunch of stuff? Uh, you know, you didn't like, you had a bunch of rugby practice. Like, so you have commitments. Right. So, like, I would just say, like, here was the problem. Right. I have this big robotics competition coming up. I had a ton of commitments this week. Right, I really had to figure this stuff out because like the robot wasn't ready and like my teammates and I like still had problems to solve there, okay? And then the essay, and, and at the same time, you have this big student government thing that you were really excited about, okay? And guess what? You had to accomplish it all and you did it, all right? Uh, and that's fine to say that here, but the, um, and, and it's fine to kind of tee up that like, hey, this is a, about like a single week in time, but I would love for you to focus more on like, the, um, you know, a lot of this stuff that you have here is like kind of unnecessary, right? Like another 20 hours, like a calculus project, right? Um, like if I add up like all of your time, like I start being like, now they're just making stuff up. You know, like it's, it's kind of unbelievable, you know, in some cases, um, you know, did you really spend 20 hours on the calculus project that week? Uh, like, I, I don't believe it, right? So a lot of people like in include stuff that's like, it ends up not being super believable uh and then that hurts your message right so I, I would cut like this uh i wouldn't say like i would not include your story about mr seymour here uh about like asking for extension like i don't think that's necessary to get to the thing i wouldn't talk about like okay this is okay like i don't think you need to say like performing any less than 100 like that's not the point that, that's telling me that that you are like oh i'm really driven like i would never give it my not my best right and yet uh that doesn't like i don't need to know that okay like i, I think that's like you want that to come through in your essay without having to explicitly say it right because what you're going to show me is like okay you're like i gotta buckle down i've got like you know big calculus and essay stuff to do and i'm going to schedule and block out my time for that right i have this coding, the stuff that needs to be done for my robot. Like I blocked out time for that. Like there's a big problem that needed to be solved. And I figured out a better way to approach solving that or a better way to approach, you know, my essays that took less time or other things like that, that enabled you to, to be successful that week, you know, in this like crunch time moment that all led to this great outcome of, of having like your, your world championship uh, robotics thing and getting elected to student government with your running mate, which is not mentioned here, but I'm just going to assume that it maybe happened because it was mentioned. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of leaving out like the Mr. Seymour stuff entirely, for example. Okay. 
Uh, you also probably don't need to include this, the excellence award, all best in all aspects of the competition. Like, you know, set a new, you know, every time a new part set, like I surpass it, like you don't need to say that, right? Those are the things that like you need to show, right? Through the actions that you have taken. Um, and so I would, you could probably cut, I would say about two thirds of the, of the word count, but keeping like the same, like, hey, I had this week of like incredible, like, stuff to do right as like the theme of this so you can show like how you were able to like accomplish everything but really highlighting more in terms of your uh robotics and maybe a problem to solve there uh that was really important to get ready for the competition uh and and so on right Th those sorts of things does that make sense i'm like the what you're getting at is cutting out a lot of the extraneous um like things i put in there that don't really and use that extra space I gain to make this focus more on how I succeed in robotics. Yeah, I would say like, what I would do is like, you're, you're under time crunch here. I'm imagine, was, was your robot actually done? Like, was it ready to go? Yes. It was. Wait, before, do you mean like before, before or that after? Week, before that week, before the 17th. It was, it was like half done, so not, not really. Yeah, so my point, right? The robot's half done. <laughs> so like, this is a problem. Right. Like it, you need to like state like big problem. Right. So I, you were like, I have to devote my time there because we have to be successful. Right. And you're really trying to like figure out how to optimize getting robot time while still accomplishing the other stuff. Right. And that kind of journey and kind of successfully getting everything done is, is more compelling. OK. Does that make sense? OK, we can't hear you. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my computer. Um, a question, there, there was, a when you were giving an example, um, there was, you were actually kind of explaining it in a way that was really um, much more conversational. So I have a question about, like, is there a preferred, like, writing style? Do they want to see more academic writing or, you know, English class writing or is conversational style writing okay? Uh, it can be anything you want. Uh, I always say it's like basically write kind of more how you talk, generally speaking, although some people try to be like very like narrative focused and like writing kind of more story line or storytelling. Uh, but that's like kind of unnecessary. So the, the, the most important thing is, is like your content actually really matters. And then your style matters only as much as how easy it is to understand the content from like a readability perspective. You're not getting points for like having a great analogy or like writing a great like, you know, dialogue. Like th those aren't getting you points, okay? Uh, what really matters is proving success in college and beyond and showing me you have these traits. So you need to describe the actions that you took to achieve like certain outcomes or to, to, to like take me down this path to actually the actions you took to get through these challenging situations. That's what needs to be covered. Got it. Thank you so much. Very, right. very helpful. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, if we had more time, we would like actually like write out an outline for your essay based off of this, but we don't have that time today, but that's what we do on, on, on like our calls. Um, because I, I actually have to, uh, to go here in a, in a minute or two. Uh, but is there any, like, uh, cause I actually have to go talk with a student about, about their essay. Um, and so is there any kind of like big questions that have come in, Debbie, uh, or things that we should The so only last question is, was asked earlier, but I put it off, was about um, the COVID question, you know, on the Common App about whether to answer that, what to do with that. Yeah, great, great question. Uh, so the COVID-19 question is basically part of the additional information section. Uh, and last year, we recommended a lot of students write it. Uh, this year, not as much. Uh, you should really only be writing that if you had a severe hardship as a result of COVID or some sort of natural disaster, actually, that may have occurred. So that could be, uh, you know, could have, these types of things could have resulted in like housing insecurity, food insecurity, needing to take care of family members, family members being sick, uh, you know, having younger siblings that were like at home doing virtual learning that was like taking a lot of your time up, you know, these sorts of things. Um, because now like enough time has kind of passed from, from that such that a lot of like your essay content uh, may be related to like COVID and not being able to do something may have been like an inciting incident for you doing something else. And that would fit into one of the other essays or maybe in your additional information section. 
Uh, so most most people that are writing COVID-19, you want to be like very much uh, question. You need to be very much good geared towards uh, uh, try to be more geared towards like these like helping people understand like the challenges that you had to go through that were very different than what maybe other students had to do. Okay, one last question, and it's um, about: Are there any topics you think people should really stay away from, or, or you know, or is anything fair game? Yeah. So the short story is: There's no such thing as a bad topic, uh, provided that it relates to these five traits. At the same time, you clearly don't want to paint yourself in an extremely negative light. Don't do that to yourself. Uh, and so, um, you know, topics that students tend to struggle with are. Uh, writing about are like athletics, music, band, um, theater, stuff that's kind of like kind of academic adjacent type activities. Um, students tend to struggle a little bit more about uh, writing about just like, hey, I really love music. It's like, well, does that prove success in college or beyond? Not really. Um, or I really love sports. Same, same story. But like those can be great settings for really good themes of essays around drive and electric curiosity initiative, those types of, you know, the, the five traits. Uh, so I always say it's like you, as long as it relates to five traits, you can have a great essay, but be really careful. Like, you know, if you're writing about uh, anxiety or depression or things that like, if it's like unclear, if you are kind of past some of those challenges in your life, uh, that could be a red flag, you know, for admissions officers or, like if you're writing some dialogue that kind of paints you in a bad light, you know, compared to peers or other people, you don't want to include that, right? Uh, Cause that, that you're like, hey, this, this student has like questionable morals, right? <laughs> or like questionable ethics or like questionable uh, characteristics, you know, personal characteristics and traits. Like you don't want that, them thinking that, okay? Uh, that, that's important. Uh, so as I said, like do this tonight, you get an extra $10 off tonight. Highly, highly recommend doing this. Sign up for the essay tune up. Uh, if you haven't started yet at all, do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, just go ahead, get started, do yourself a favor, uh, and uh, you know your student can get uh, their Common App essay done, supplements like in, 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 you know well in advance of, of the deadlines. Uh, as I said, uh, we're, we're probably going to run out of spots this year, so please, like if you want to do this uh, and get in in front of other people that will really be coming last minute because they always do. Uh, you know, you you've heard this tonight. Just, Go ahead, take action. Uh, if you need to talk to us, you can uh, uh, at prompt.com slash road to college. You will see our phone number. You will see a way to schedule a time for us to call you. Uh, and by doing that, you can kind of lock in like, okay, like you you will be able to 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 be doing that. Right? And honestly, we're, guys, we're it is a so. great feeling yeah. that your, your kid has this done, you know, honestly, like three days, five days before the deadline that, you know, you're not kind of. Um, yeah, we have know. a bunch of kids that are already done with all of their yeah. early, early decision essays. <laughs> Let me tell you, they're really happy. And, and uh, I was talking to a student that I was working with the other day. Uh, he was like, yeah, I showed my, my, my mom our, my new essay. And she was like, this is so much better than the one that she had helped with. <laughs> and so, but now they're like super excited, right? So, and like, that's the number one thing. It's like, you want your students to be confident in the essays they're submitting, right? That's, that's the, the, the only thing you can really do is be like, we put our best foot forward on these applications. All right. Okay. Well, Brad, right. thank you. People loved the, um, the going through the, the live um, essays. I think it really helped kind of um, bring a lot of what you talk about, you know, to, to, yeah, to life. Like, yeah. To no, life and, yeah. yeah. No, I, I love doing that too. Uh, but as I said, like, I always like to actually like write out, like, here's the outline. Here's how actually how you improve it. Cause it wasn't like quite as action oriented as, as we, we typically are when we actually, uh, you know, it definitely gave time, people a peek. together. <laughs> like it, gave, it gave people a yeah. peek into how, yeah. how, how, you know, your guys, yeah, how we you, think about it, how yeah. admissions officers think about it. All right. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Have a good thank one. you, Beth. Thank Bye, you. Good night. Good night. Bye.